Hello and welcome to the newsroom. Here are the latest stories we're tracking at the moment. Ahead of the meeting between the federal government and the organized labor scheduled to be held on Monday, the Nigeria Labor Congress has said the government must meet its demand to cushion the effects of a fuel subsidy removal. The union threatened that it would not hesitate to call out workers for industrial action, adding that it only suspended its planned strike. The NLC says the high cost of fuel is inflicting unbearable hardship on Nigerians and the government must act fast with respect to providing palliatives, adding that it was expecting an increase in the minimum wage from 30,000 naira to 150,000 naira. The Academic Staff Union of Universities asked to his ex-president Bola Tunubu to change the newly assented Students' Loans Act to grant for indigent students. ASA's national president, Emmanuel Osodeke, in a televised interview said the stringent requirements for accessing and repaying the loan would prevent more than 90% of students from benefiting. He added that if the funds are coming from the Federation account, it would be more appropriate to classify them as grants rather than loans. And the management of Arik Air Limited has dismissed allegations of misappropriation of funds to the tune of 120 billion naira. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission had reportedly detained the receiver manager appointed by the Assets Management Corporation of Nigeria for Arik Air Kamelu Omokide over alleged misappropriation and diversion of about 120 billion naira. Reacting to the development, the airline described the report as false, saying it was nothing more than well-concocted lies and forms part of a deliberate campaign of calumny against the receiver manager. And a new report has shown evidence that COVID-19 came from a Chinese lab and the very first people infected by the Berg were researchers at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. The report shows that three WIV scientists developed COVID-19 symptoms as early as November 2019, a month before the outbreak. The report also points blame at China for having waged the greatest cover-up in world history, which sparked a global pandemic behind nearly 7 million deaths and untold economic harm. And in business, the Central Bank of Nigeria has lifted the limits placed on domiciliary accounts. The new regulation allows account holders to deposit freely, have unrestricted access to funds in accounts and make up to $10,000 withdrawals daily. According to the CBN, the policy changes aim to promote transparency, liquidity and price discovery in the FX market in order to improve FX supply, discourage speculation and ensure overall stability in the FX market. And on the global scene, Israeli forces have killed two Palestinians and wounded more than two dozen others during a raid in the occupied West Bank. A statement from the Palestinian Health Ministry shows the Israeli forces had launched the raid at around 4 a.m., killing two people and injuring 28 others. And in sport, two goals from Vector Simhen has helped the Super Eagles defeat Serie Leon 3-2 to qualify for the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations with one game to spare. The third goal from Nigeria in the game played at the Samuel Kinyondo Stadium in Morombia, Liberia on Sunday was scored by Kelechi Ihana Cho. Nigeria now topped the group with 12 points from five games followed by Guinea-Bissau with 10 points. Now that's the latest update from the newsroom. Join us again for more updates. Thank you for watching.